Dad. You are watching the number one podcast in the whole entire YouTube wrestling community, and I'm one of your hosts, Juan. And I'm your other host, Jean Paul Leck. And together we are. Ray. And it is time for Night 2 AW Fighters Fest. How are you doing, Jean Paul? It's been Good. a video that we're going to be talking about this second night of uh, this pay per view that didn't feel like a pay per view because there was no video packages. It was yeah. just matches. Yeah, I mean, you can call it Fighter Fest, you can call it a Great American Bash, you can call it whatever. They're not pay-per-views. It's just the regular NXT, it's regular AEW Dynamite, it's the regular show. They're, they're just wearing Hawaiian t-shirts. We didn't yeah. even see the girls. Yeah. Night, night one, we saw the girls, and it was like, ee, and then tonight we don't see nothing. But, no, they're, I mean, they're, we, they're, they're, the, the one thing we left. Yeah, the, yeah, they only paid them for one night. They're like, yeah, oh. yeah they only paid but, them for But, I mean, one the one night. thing we did see, I was surprised by the main event. I didn't think that was going to be as good as it was. Not saying that those two guys couldn't go, but the main event was good. Um, you know, they, they kind of stuffed a lot in here tonight. I would have taken one or two of these matches out, made some of them maybe a little longer. But, I mean, I think I enjoyed night one overall a little more, but tonight wasn't bad. No, no, today wasn't bad. Like, you know, and, and also we didn't get Cody this time kind of like, kind of with a, you know, fuck up like finish in his match so that's kind of like that yeah, well, we, did, least, we did get him eating hot wings but you know yeah no that's you know that's fine but like i, I didn't mind the fact that like the show kind of like had a little like a decent flow for what it was yeah so thank you so very much for watching every single one of our videos don't forget monday night row with jean paul Eck. you know he's gonna be taking a little bit of solo shows we'll see if i can you know join yeah, every like now and then you know like a uh, contractual like obligations with other stuff like made me you know not being able to be part of it, but I'll be backstage, you know, guys. But thank you so very much. But I'll be here for Dynamite. I'll be back for NXT and SmackDown. And we have plenty of stuff. You know, the exactly. horror show. This is going to be a horror show on, on you know, <laughs> for SmackDown. And also in two weeks, we have Slamiversary for Impact. So, you know, Robrick is always packed with things. So, Jean-Paul, AEW started, or like Firefest Night 2 started with like Kenny Omega and Adam Handman Page defending his championships against Private Party. This was, you know, a good match, but like Jean Paul always says, this has become just a spot fest because that's all they do. You know, they try to like condense a lot of like high spots and then just kind of like tell a story within that those parameters. But do I like it? Do I don't like? Um, I think it's all right. I think that yeah. like, when it's overly done, it's not as good. But like right now, it was okay for me because and it was quick. I, yeah, and I'm gonna be honest with the spots. I like when spots are done, but it's gotta be like very smooth if i see a guy standing there going like and waiting for a guy to hit him i'm completely taken out of it that's like you know you you say like you don't like when shows are are pre-taped and we can see the endings before it airs that's the same thing that i feel when i see a guy just standing there waiting for a move i already know it's a predetermined sport but when a guy stands there and makes it that obvious it takes me right out of it. So yeah, that's it the only problem I have with spots. Yeah, it needs to be a little bit spots. more, you know, it needs yeah. to feel more, like, legit. Than, like, yeah, or legit more organic. Like. But, I mean, the match was good. There was some good spots. You know, I love Hangman. Um, but this match was thrown together last week. You know, Private Party, oh, okay, next week they're going to have a title opportunity. No build. You knew the titles weren't going to change hands. But, yes, you know, it, a, a it decent, was, a pretty good way to start the show. Yeah, it was. It was, you know, a lot of high spots. Like I said, I really like when, like, uh, one of the members for Pirate Party. I think it was, it, it was, it was Cassidy. Uh, he he dove like he did, like a. I think he did like a senton or something on the outside, and then everybody like Hannah and Handman Page also like kind of oversells because he goes and then all the way over the barricade and stuff like that. So this was like good stuff. I really like that. But like you said, put this match was put on why because they couldn't have. Moxley and Brian Cage for the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. That's why they did it. And, mm -hmm. of course, they're going to keep their championships on Omega and Page. Why? Because they're the champions, and there's no reason for exactly. them to make a title switch. So that's why they did it. And Jump Paul, of course, this time at least they were able to hit their finisher, which is really cool. Yep. The, yep, last the, last, yeah, the last call and done. I almost and said done. the last shot. That's the wrong show. No, but. Yeah, that's, <laughs> the wrong show. that's for tomorrow. But, you know, there wasn't last shot. That's all like, that's <laughs> what we can say. But, you know, last call. One, two, three. And we have, you know, the same AEW Tag Team Champions. They retain. Yeah. We'll see what happens with that Paul. You know, they've been holding off on the Adam Hanneman page kind of going heel. You know, the turn... Turning Adam Hanman page has been like they've been holding off, and I don't know when they're going to do it. If they're going yeah, to do it, like I said, the I don't see them doing it until they feud either again with the Young Bucks or with FTR. 
I see them as long as they just keep feuding with, I mean, no offense, but like mid card tag teams, they're not going to drop the title or yeah. they're not going to break the, you know, team up and turn. I, I think, you know, and, and we're going to touch a little bit more on this guys, but I think Lucha Bros, Lucha Bros need to be the one because that to oh, me, yeah. that's the most legit tag team that AEW has, or maybe the Revival or FTR, but to me, the Lucha Bros, because today they put on a great, great match. But before that, Jean-Paul Lazarcher going against Joy Janela with the Snake Roberts and Sonny Kiss, you know, on the ringside. This match, for me, should have been a lot shorter and more favor, like, to Lance Archer, but actually was, like, long, and he didn't look too well, too good for me, at least. No, I, I agree with you 100%. Sonny Kiss came in, you know, got offense on Archer. It was, uh, I mean, Joey Janela had a lot of offense. Jake got involved, then he, like, th- I don't, did he actually pull the, you know, snake out of the bag, or did he just tease it? No, he only teased it. No, no Yeah, no, that's no. what I thought. I thought he was just teased. There probably wasn't even a snake in that bag, you know, the way PETA is nowadays. You can't even look at an animal the wrong way. So, it was like, okay, all this stuff, but I mean, I would have actually preferred this match. No offense to Joey Janela if this was thing was 30 seconds and over. Yeah, yeah. Because it, it was, was like, you, you, they dropped the ball hard with Lance Archer. You need to really just, hey, let's start over and let's rebuild him as a monster. And he kind of struggles and almost loses to Joey Janela. It's like, come on. And that's what I mean. That's exactly my point. It's just like Laz Archer lost that opportunity with Cody. So what do you do to make this guy kind of like believable again? It should have been like 30 seconds, like you said. And then his finisher, Razor's Edge. And that, mm-hmm. or the, uh, what is exactly. it? The Awakening? Yeah, Awakening. Yeah, or, yeah, or uh, what is it? Isn't it the... It might be. I don't remember. There's yeah, so many yeah, finishers. Yeah. Yeah. Finisher, uh, razor's Edge. Razor's, razor's Edge. Razor's Edge. The Chico. Razor's Edge. Boom Chico. and done. Come on. But, like, I, come on. Like, um, you actually, George Janela seemed like signs that he could have win. And even Sonny Kiss did a 450 splash mm-hmm. and almost, like, help him out to get the win. No, I didn't. It doesn't seem to me like a way to portray a guy that Lars Archer. Because, you remember, the video packages with the snake. All this buildup, like this guy could have been easily challenging for AEW World Heavyweight Championship. You know, not even for the TNT. Should have gone for the biggest one. Didn't exactly do that. loses that opportunity, and now he struggles to beat Joey Janela. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't get know it. Even the snake is happy with the way that like they are actually oh, looking. Why not? I don't. I don't think so. So you ma- match really quick, and he did the Razor's Edge on top of, onto like a table that they had set up, and then he put him out in the ring. One, two, three. You know, Lance Archer wins. Like I said, like when it comes to match itself, quality good, but like as a story and how you portray your guy, he didn't deserve to get that much offense. Like Joey Janela did not need to have that much offense on Lance Archer. So that's oh, all yeah. I can say about that, Jean Paul. You agree? Oh, I agree. I mean, it should. It's like oh, when Ricochet went against Brock Lesnar, you saw how they booked that. That's how this thing should have been booked. Thirty seconds and done. You know, F five yep. and done. Same thing. We got a video package for Darby Allen, and he's still, you know, in his home. He's still like learning how to skate and all of that stuff. You know, and hopefully when he comes back, he's able to come back strong. And then he should all, he should be a candidate uh, for the TNT Championship. He should oh, be I, yeah, like I think he will. I, be the one. Yeah, I could see him being the one beating Cody, too. You know, they saw him do that, like, insane coffin drop. I mean, it was probably like 20, 30, 40 feet in the air, something crazy. He went into a big, you know, pit of foam, and it's like, okay, but are you going to jump that high onto the ring? No. So, like, why are we seeing it? But I guess to show he's a daredevil. So, I mean, we'll see. He's exciting, you know, to come back. He's a fan favorite, so I'm excited. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, no, like I said, but, like, give him a meaningful win, give him, like, a oh, championship yeah. win, make him look special. Maybe whoever challenges Cody tomorrow, I mean, not, not next week on, like, Fight for the Fallen, maybe can mm-hmm. be Darby Allen. although we've seen that match, like, so many times, but, like, something that he actually becomes legit once again because, like, yeah, like you said, he's a fan favorite, but he's not even wrestling right now. So that was exactly. all I can say about that. Jump Paul, we get... Tony Schiavone, Tony Chubani, he's going to be interviewing Taz and Brian Cage. They're going to be kind of in a promo. There was a big announcement tease. And this was the return of, like, one of the oldest, like, belts and one of, like, the most nostalgic belts for, like, the ECW fans. And that's a title that was created by Taz that he was saying in his promo is the FTW or the Fuck the World Championship, which is really cool. And he says that, like, it doesn't matter, Brian Cage you know, is going to lose or win to John Moxley because he's going <laughs> to walk in as champion as he's going to walk out as champion because he gave him 
the fuck the world championship to Brandy. Oh yeah, and, and it, it was awesome because, like you said, the ECW fans. If you know, for those who remember, like Shane Douglas was the champion, and Shane Douglas and Taz they never had a match for the belt. It was always Shane was getting away out of it, or he's like, "Oh, I'm hurt, I can't wrestle you." Taz is like, "This is bullshit. You're not going to give me my title opportunity, so I have my own championship." He's saying the same thing with Moxley. Moxley's too scared. He keeps making excuses. He won't fight Brian Cage. So th- there's parallels there in the stories. So he gave him the belt, and it's cool. You know, I liked it, but the only concern I had for it was, are they going to actually use this belt, and is it going to be recognized under AEW? And if it is, I hope it doesn't turn into, like, the 24-7 championship where it's like, oh, oh look yeah. at this, and then it becomes kind of a bullshit jobber title. Or are they going to have it where it's just the big man title because, oh, we don't ever want to put the main title on guys like Hager and, you know, Wardlow because they don't, we don't think that they can carry our company, but they're legit enough to deserve a title. So we'll give them the FTW title. We'll see. We'll see. Well, like, yeah, there is, is a lot of uh, question marks into mm-hmm. this. I mean, it's cool. And I really like how, like, they're bringing back, like, old school titles because, like, for nostalgic purposes, this works absolutely fine. Oh, yeah. You know, like, everybody, like, that was an ECW fan that remembers that, that loves yeah. that. Yeah, uh, the, the biggest and pop for that. yeah, I agree. The biggest pop for me was that it was the same, I mean, it might have been recreated, but it was the same design. They didn't try to make it look new. It was right from, like, 97, 96. No, and, I, and I agree. Yeah. But maybe, maybe, like you said, there's kind of, like, correlation right there because of the new design of the United States Championship, which, by the way, a lot of people are loving it. I think that it looks really cool. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, WWE needed to revamp, redesign, you know, give us something a little fresher. And it looks cool. It looks legit. It doesn't look like the Universal Championship. It doesn't look like the WWE Championship. And, like, they look kind of like, ugh. Kind of yeah, looks awful. Like a, yeah, kind of like these titles that they should redesign all of them because it looks good. It finally looks legit one more time. Mm. So Jean Paul, after that, I think they, they keep bumping that match with John Moxley. So next week, fight for the Fallen. We're gonna get that match. Probably John Moxley is gonna be clear to wrestle. It's gonna be live because this one was taped. This show was taped. Is by the way to consider that. So next week's gonna be live, and finally we're gonna get this AEW Championship match. But hopefully. Brian Cage wins because like we've been saying like if he doesn't win oh if he's gonna hold that strap the fuck the world championship to me it's not gonna be believable either so oh like, yeah don't do something if to like kill it next week so that's all I gotta say on that John Paul the Young Bucks in FTR going against the Butcher and the Blade and the Lucha Bros this match a lot of people were popping online a lot of people were loving it I think that like the two main guys that like did the best work out of all these eight it was the Lucha Bros and it's good because they needed to a resurgence like they did today. I think like they deserve to like have the performance that they did. Tell me about this. Yeah, I mean, I I always loved the Lucha Bros. I thought they looked good. You know, just skip ahead to the end of the thing. They're the ones who got the pin, so that's legit. But my only issue with it is it's like I just don't like how I said Matt Jackson. He gets a hot tag. He comes in. He literally just like elbows all these guys off the ring. Like he just clears the floor of them. Like, okay, he if he knocks out the blade, like okay, maybe Phoenix. Okay, but you're not going to take out all four guys. You know, like when do you, when do you ever see it? Like you punch a dude on the apron, and then you go beat up the other guy in the ring. And oh, I yeah. also and one thing I also don't like is this new ten second rule. Because I feel like that's just going to allow, especially like towards the end when they all tag when all the faces tagged each other in. Oh yeah. Like what does that even mean if you have ten seconds? You know, I'm, but I guess you have to make the tag to like, I mean, it's like confusing. Just go by normal tag team rules. But this match had a lot of the spots where it's like, oh, let's stand here. But then it also had some of the spots that I thought were legit, like the Canadian Destroyer on the outside. Canadian Destroyer was pretty good. The one that yeah. like they messed up is the one, one that Pentagon and I think it was the Blade. I, was, I'm, I'm yeah, sure one of one of them, or it was the butcher, but he had it was either Nick or Matt. He had him up almost kind of like in the Styles class position. You know, he's ha- holding him there, and he was just holding him for like what felt like an eternity. Yeah, and he's just standing there waiting for somebody to like. I guess it was. And, and then they did a the move, move, and then like he kind of didn't know if it was legal or not. You saw like yeah. hesitation, and then the rep is like, no, 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 <laughs> it's like Pentagon, Pentagon. <laughs> like that. That was kind of the things like yeah. you said. Every time that there's a lot of guys, it becomes a clusterfuck. It is mm-hmm. absolutely the And that's design. not even and I'm not even just shit on AEW. That's no, any, anywhere. That's any it's it's too hard to do an eight man tag, especially if you if it's spots where you oh, okay, we gotta remember to do this. If you're calling it in the ring and on the fly, it's probably a lot easier. And remember, see, like it looked like they were gonna do the magic killer because it had it like the way that Gallows and Anderson has like the opponent, but like they end up doing kind of like a like a slam, but like it didn't yeah. look good. 
But like you said, then they kind of made it up for us because of the Canadian destroyer. But that's Ray Phoenix, though. Ray Phoenix, mm-hmm. like, he's like having fire. He's he's a little Sabu suicidal, and he pulls it off. Oh they yeah, did really good spots. I really, uh, I kind of like how like they did the ten second rule. Like you said, a little confusing, but I kind of like how like they were all doing moves on the on the guy. Like they were did the splash. They did like yeah. The, uh, oh, I mean, I, 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 I did like that. I, but... I would have liked it if it would have been more like the story would have been flipped and it would have been like the young bucks and maybe private party two babyface teams. I just to me, I don't like the FTR and. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. I, I don't like because, you know, you guys are supposed to hate each other. You talk all this shit on each other and then you're going to be on the same team. Yes. And it's yes, like, okay. But, like, the good thing is, like, Pentagon and Ray Phoenix, they hit the pad that, like, the pile driver that they have, like, and Ray mm-hmm. Phoenix also helps out. They hit that one, two, three, and actually they win. They yeah, because I, I think three. there was some dissension. I think he accidentally hit, like, uh, Dax or whichever one of the, you know, whichever one of the FTR revival, yeah. whatever. He, he hit one of them and he was like, oh, shit. And he was distracted. And like you said, they hit the pile driver. So I guess it continues on the feud with FTR and the Bucks. So it's not yeah, and then the worst thing. Gonna but... have, they're going to have that match next week. It's going to be FTR against the Lucha Bros. Yeah, so, so see, that they're would be give us like a, I think, for example, this week, NXT is going to beat AEW once again. Mm-hmm. But next week, I think AEW is going to get the win. One oh, more yeah, time yeah. I think they will. And the main fact, jump live. live. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Remember that. It's going to be live, but like you said, it was it was a decent match, but some spots like uh, well, like you said, it, if there's some disconnections, it looks bad. But yeah. overall, I think it looked pretty decent. So going to pretty decent, we get Big Swole. She's not allowed to get in into the building. That was kind of like weird, you know, like oh, it's because of Britt Baker and all that stuff. She's like, oh, you guys made me drive like three and a half hours. You could have said something, send me a fax or something. So like the storyline keeps going with like Britt Baker and Big Swole. So uh, it's good. I really like that. You know, she's like we're seeing some personality. And talking mm-hmm. about personality, we're going to go see Nyla Rose in a handicap match because she promised she was going to do something, and she goes against Kenzie Page and Killing King. So, like, pretty much Nyla Rose, you know, the whole match. Yes, yes, them up, squash done. match. And, you know, afterwards, like, she cut the promo, oh, I'm going to have a manager. I'm not going to tell you who it is. She's like, everybody here who has a manager has gold. It's like, uh, Sean Spears doesn't have gold. The Lance Archer doesn't have gold. But it's like, okay, you know, I'll, I'll give it to her. You know, two people do, two people don't. Okay. So, you know, we'll see who the manager is. That actually adds some intrigue, but she called that Hikaru Shida right away. Yeah. I don't, I don't like that, you know, because earlier what we see, Big Swole. Put Big Swole against her. You know, you're having Big Swole feud with a woman who's injured for who knows how long. Like, well, well that's, that shouldn't even be a feud. I mean, Baker can come down to the match and try to interfere that way, you know, screaming at her. But, I mean, put Big Swole in against Hikaru Shida because I don't oh, think yeah. Nyla Rose and Shida – is like we just saw that feud. Now we gonna see it again. So it's I mean, I, I, I'm intrigued for the manager at least, though. Uh, I might be Awesome Kong. I'm thinking it might be Awesome Kong. Like that's that's uh, just my gut. Just mm-hmm. telling me it might be Awesome Kong because you know, remember she was like the big thing, big return. She's gonna go back to wrestling. She starts wrestling. Oh, she finds out that like she's done. Then she can no longer do it. But like she's backstage supposedly. So like maybe that's her. Like maybe that. Yeah. Or like who could be? I mean, like you said, potentially somebody's mm-hmm. gonna take. I mean, if, if it's Brandy. Like, Forget oh it. no, yeah, no. If it is Brandy, then you know, no. But Brandy is actually with Ali. They're per- yeah. they're like all the sister nightmares. I think that's okay. cool because Ali is actually wrestling again. They want oh, okay, tag, good. Like on AEW Dark, I just saw that because of Ali. I'm sorry, but you know, Ali's hot, so I just watched that. So that's why I did it. But I think that like they're like I said, they're they're per- right now. So I don't think it might be Brandy. But if it is, like you said, done. So mm-hmm. something that is done that like didn't really cause any attraction for me, any excitement. SEU against the Dark Order and you know, and the Dark Order with Cole Cabana. This match was pretty decent, but also fast. Really didn't get any any of my interest just because the storyline is not even there for me. You know, it's no. kind of like a boring storyline. But in the end, of course, like they finally they gave the win to like the Dark Order and Cole Cabana. So that was good because they, they keep pushing that story. They keep pushing that story. And every t- ever since, even like I think it was uh, Jim Ross and also Excalibur, they said ever since Cole Cabana went to the office of Brody Lee, he's been winning matches. So that's kind of like the storyline. But what do you think about this jump? Yeah, I mean, but see, this is like, you know, this is a, a good mid-card feud, but it's tainted with what you did beforehand when he lost to Moxley. Because oh, anytime yeah. I see Brody Lee, I just think of when he yelled at the guys for coughing and, oh, let's just make fun of Vince McMahon for three weeks instead of trying to make Brody Lee actually legit. It's like, oh, let's just make fun of somebody else. Okay, that's like middle school bullshit. 
And then, you know, oh, he loses to Moxley. Oh, okay, now the guy's dead and buried. Oh, but now we're going to try to build him up after that. Maybe you should have tried to build him up in the beginning so he would have been legit in our eyes when he had the title opportunity. So oh, yeah. they kind of have it flipped backwards. We'll see where it goes. But, I mean, it's a, you know, it's a decent mid-card feud. You know, I like SCU. I, you know, I love Christopher Daniels, so. Oh, yeah, no, like, uh, Christopher Daniels is good. Scorpio Sky is good. Like, he's been having a lot of matches in AEW Dark. Whoa, somebody watches AEW Dark. I don't mm -hmm. know. <laughs> I just know the results because this time they were smart enough and they put the results right there. Even John exactly. Paul said, like, Brian Pillman had a match and he lost to Sean Spears. When he mm -hmm. needed to win, then he loses, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, Brian Pillman is, like, a pretty well-considered guy on ML MLW. So, and MLW has been, like, a... Kind of like an NXT for AEW, you can say that because yeah. that's where like MJF came out. That's when Havoc came out. You know, a lot of guys came from MLW. So maybe Pillman is going to get an opportunity, maybe get a contract, and that will be cool because, like you said, his father, of course, was a great wrestler. Of course, his life was cut short, and that that sucks. But like we we will be looking forward to see Brian Pillman, especially with the Elite. I think they will be able to carry him and his legacy a lot better than when WWE really could because it will become another uh, Michael McKillacuddy, or, you know, like oh, that yeah. that end up being Mr. Perfect's son, and that's not what you want to see. You know, Curtis no. Axel. So that's the stuff, Jean Paul. Let's go now to the main event. The Le Champion Chris Jericho going against mm, Freshly Squeeze, Orange Cassidy. Mm, Freshly Squeeze, he, well, he was so, so fresh, but... With the hands in the, in the end, pockets. Jump Paul, like he was saying, it was a good match. I really enjoyed it. Um, a, a kind of, of course, the interference by Santana and Ortiz helped him out, held Le Champion, but it was good. What do you think, Jump Paul? Yeah, and, and I like because as soon as he sent the best friends back in the beginning, it's like, okay, but you know Jericho is going to come out with his boys. Of course he did. And I'm thinking, oh, the best friends are going to run down like five minutes into this match and it's going to just be chaos. No, they didn't come down to the very end. So I appreciated that. I, you know, they let the guy it play out because Orange Cassidy was like, I want to do it alone. And there's a bunch of times you thought he was going to overcome the odds. And I mean, that would have been legit if Jericho would have put him over. And I don't think it's anything political. I think, I mean, it makes sense for Jericho to win because you still got to keep Jericho strong. Yeah, yeah. He, like if he keeps losing and it's like, and he becomes a joke. Then it's like, oh, okay, then your hottest guy, the guy with the most name value is a loser and a joke. Exactly. So they, they don't want to do agree. that. I but, um, I mean, Orange Cassie looked good. Like, you look like a stud. There's no way you can be like, oh, this guy sucks. You know, you might not like the gimmick, but, hey, you know, that's on you. The guy's over. And it was a good match. Oh, yeah. yeah and it was a really good match. The only thing I got to say, anticlimactic ending. Because actually, for example, I know NXT was already done because the results were coming up and they mm -hmm. kept going. They kept going for like two or three more minutes. Now, where is this going to end? And like in the most anticlimactic way, Cassidy just runs into the Judas. Effect. Oh, yeah. I mean, when he hit the code breaker, I thought it was done then. And then he kicked out. I'm like, oh, we got to see the bull. I mean, again, we love Jericho, but bullshit finisher oh, by yeah. him. Yeah, the he hits the Judas no, effect. No, 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 no. Oh, it's not yet. Yeah. I mean, if, I think if he hit a, an actual spinning back fist, it would have more effect he hits the elbow and he goes like this yeah and you know what i thought that like he did that because like two sequences before that he hit like a you know <laughs> like he when cassidy goes to the ropes and he hit an elbow so i'm like oh that's the judas effect <laughs> you know yeah, like, but it doesn't even like look like a yeah. devastating move so that's the only one thing i gotta say on that and i know you agree with me mm -hmm. but like i really like the fact that like when he hit the code breaker they call it the code breaker yeah so i'm like thank god did he win the rights to the move yeah maybe but, Good, but like in the end, like you said, like the main thing is like Orange Cassidy got a great showing. Mm -hmm. If Jericho would have put him over, like you said, it wouldn't it would make total sense. But Jericho cannot be losing anymore. One because what the inner circle already looks like crap. Oh you know, yeah, they're not yeah. hot anymore. Yeah, Sammy's gone. You know, you lost him. So and then you Hager, Hager, Hager. You know, he loses and he's done done for a while. So and now Dan and Ortiz he's three. Done. Yeah, so, so like it's like it's, it's, it's gonna be the inner losers, yeah. or you know, or, or the circle of losers. So uh -huh. you, you need a, you need the biggest guy, or then the guys like you said, main value, you know, to win, and that's what they did. And like I said, Cassidy will have his opportunity. You know, mm -hmm. he's young, and he's he to get his opportunity with Le Champion and be able to pull up a really good match. There you go. That's all you need. You know, that tells you that down the line, at some point, it will not be a surprise to see Orange Cassidy either with the TNT Championship. Or with the AEW World Heavyweight Championship. I wouldn't be, you know, upset if that happens. Because it will be mm, freshly mm -hmm. squeezed. 
So Jean Paul, you know, your conclusions on AW Fighter Fest as a whole. You say you enjoy nine one more. At least yeah. nine two was a little better. Are you looking for like Fight for the Fallen? Yeah, I mean I think Fight for the Fallen will be good. I don't I see it being on par with night one. I don't know if it'll be that much better. I mean, depending on the outcomes and what they do, if we see like, you know, maybe debuts because it's live, you know, hey, you can bring people in, you know, do surprises. I think it'll be a good show, but I mean, I don't think, like I said, I don't think it'll be better than maybe Fighter Fest night one, but we'll yeah, see. No, I, we'll I'm see. still, like, I'm still excited. Main thing is like, you know, Brian Cage needs to be the AEW World Heavyweight Champion, like yeah. we said, because they cannot be jobbing guys out. And I mean, John Moxley has his time. Unfortunately, it has not looked so legit, but you know, that's what it is. So, family, Jean Paul, where they can find us in the social media world. You'll find us on Facebook, Instagram, the original Rope Break, Twitter, the OG Rope Break, and right here on YouTube, the OG, or the original Rope Break. There we go. Meat and potatoes, you know, yep. thank you so very much for, like, all the subscription on YouTube, for all the love on the Instagram page, you know, we're almost, like, 400, 500 subscribers. Thank you again. We love it. You know, thank you for the all interactions. So, Jean-Paul, tomorrow you and me have to cover NXT, the Great American Badge Night 2, mm -hmm. and, you know, we hear a lot of news, you know, a lot of stuff, so we're going to have a really great show to talk about. So, Jean-Paul, yep. one more thing that we have left to say is what, Jean-Paul? Oh, uh, 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 uh.